Arrays are fantastic tools for us to be using for thinking about multiplication. Here we've got an array of 3 times 4, and nice and easy we can count those up, 3 times 4 is 12. But, what happens when we have a larger one like this? Or an even larger one again? Mm, well, I suppose I could count up every single one of the dots, but it's not a very efficient strategy, and we're mathematicians, we want to be as efficient as possible. So, what can we do about this? This is where we're going to need other strategies to help us out. I'm going to be using these MAB blocks to kind of help us think about things. Now, just keep in mind that one is a unit, a long, like this, is 10, and a flat like this is 100. We're going to be using standard notation to solve these problems today. You might also know that as vertical multiplication. So, let's set out our problem like this. So, we've got 23 times 7. Okay, so I need to make sure that I've lined them up. So, I've got 23 on top and 7 underneath. 7 is underneath the units column. And I need my multiplication sign there as well, just to let me know what exactly I'm doing. So, I want to multiply the top number by the bottom number, and I'm going to work them out from right to left. Okay, so I'm going to start with the units, then tens, and if I've got hundreds, hundreds, and thousands, thousands, and so on. Okay, so I've written it out, and now I need to start multiplying these together, and so I'm working from right to left. So I'm going 7 times whatever's on top, so 7 times 3. 7 times 3 is 21. And so I've got 21 units here, which I could actually write in a different way. I could write that as two tens and one unit. What am I going to write down? Well, I've only got one unit, and that's what I'm going to write down in my units column. So I'm going to write down that one, and then I'm going to carry those two tens over to the tens column. I'm going to add a little plus sign there so that I know that I'm going to add them once I finish multiplying whatever number is in the tens column. So, I've got now 7 times 2, which is actually 7 times 2 groups of 10. 7 times 2 is 14, which is actually 14 groups of 10, so it's 140. Do I leave it there? Well, actually, no, I need to think about these other 10s that I've got up here. There's two 10s. So, now I've got 14 10s plus 2 10s is 16 10s. What do I write down? Well, actually, now I've got 106 10s. So, I put the 6 in the tens column, and I've got this 100 I need, I need to add. I don't have any other 100, so 7 times 0 is 0, plus 100, or 1, 1 group of 100 is 1 group of 100, so my total is 161. Let's try another one now without the MAB blocks. So, we've got 4 times 237. Okay, let's start by laying them out. So, I'll put the 4 underneath the 237. And then we're going to work it out from right to left, so starting with our units column. So we're multiplying 237 by 4. So 4, we're going to be doing something with every time. We're only going to be looking at one column for the top number each time. So let's start with 7 times 4, and now using our times table knowledge, or a times table chart, if you haven't quite memorised them, we know that that is 28. So we've got two tens and eight units. I'm going to carry the two tens across to the tens column, and I'm going to put down the eight units in my equal sign down there. Now I'm going to look at my tens column. So I've got three tens. I'll add, remember, I'll add those two later. We don't worry about them until the very uh, until after we've done the multiplication. So we've got three times four, which is twelve, plus two plus the two tens is 14, which is actually 14 groups of 10. So I've got four tens and 100, 14 groups of 10. So I'm going to put down the four, and I'm going to carry the 100 over to the hundreds column. Now I've got four times two, or it's actually four times two hundreds. So that is eight, 800, plus that 100 is nine hundreds. So we write down that 9, and we get our solution. So 4 times 237 is 948.